Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose and from the sounds of it, Xbox might be making a major change that fans will really like if this ends up being true. Now, there's still a big if on that and I'll kind of explain why here in just a little bit, but seriously, if this ends up happening, this is going to be really big, so we will go over all of that later on in the video. Now, we also got that PlayStation State of Play yesterday, and they posted several updates about some upcoming PlayStation 5 games. The one detail was just a little bit more hidden, but this will actually be very important for some fans out there that does intend on waiting for the upcoming Deathloop. So we will go over all that as well, but to start the video off, we're actually going to take a look at some Kickstarter updates, and this is something that I really do like doing on this channel, and that's highlighting some of these good-looking games that may be going a little bit under the radar, and Sacrifier is one of those games. Now, if you follow the channel, you may actually recognize this game because we talked about Sacrifier in the past, and it was actually not too long ago. Over at E3, Sacrifier was shown, and right away, I thought this game really stood out. It looks absolutely stunning. It's like this old-school JRPG with a bit of a modern twist. You have those pixelated graphics from, like, old 90s JRPGs, but in this 3D world, and the combat looks really interesting as well. I just really think that Sacrifier stands out, especially with its artistic direction, and if you do like old school JRPGs, then this game might be worth paying attention to. And actually about that, if you're already sold on Sacrifier, you can actually go fund this game over on Kickstarter. It's actually already been funded, but the good news is that they did post an update today that allows you to get a physical version of this game as they partnered up with Limited Run Games. Now, Limited Run Games does an excellent job with making retail games for some of these smaller independent developers. And here we have a nice little box art of Sacrifier, though. If you decide you don't want to find it on Kickstarter, you can actually wait because Limited Run Games will put this up on their website later on. I did get a confirmation from the developer themselves, so there is that. Though you might have to wait a little bit longer for Limited Run Games to actually put it on their website. I'm not really sure about the time frame for when all that's going to happen, so you know, do keep that in mind. Nonetheless, I mean, Sacrifier is looking really good so far, and like I said before, you might want to pay attention to this game, especially if you like old school JRPGs. Now, speaking of Kickstarter campaigns, I know there's been a lot of excitement for this next one, but we did get an update for X-Screen, which is a really interesting peripheral that you can actually attach to the Xbox Series S. Yeah, just check this thing out. It looks absolutely amazing. It essentially turns your Xbox Series S into a mobile style device by allowing you to attach a screen through the HDMI port and then you can just kind of fold it over and then, you know, just carry it in your backpack. I mean, as long as you have an outlet near you, you can pretty much take your Xbox Series wherever you want. Now, this is going to be kind of a niche product and it's really going to favor people who travel a lot. But I mean, if you do travel a lot, this is an awesome looking device. This is like something that we used to see with like the PlayStation 1 or the GameCube. But I think with the Xbox Series S in specific, it just looks so perfect with this screen connected to it. It's just like it was always meant to be a device that could have a foldable screen over top of it. Really thinking about it though, the Xbox Series as paired with the X screen could make this a great secondary device even if you already own an Xbox Series X. And the specs are overall pretty decent, though it is important to keep in mind that you're not going to get the full capability of the Xbox Series S by using this device. The X screen does have a resolution of 1080p and a 60 hertz refresh rate, which means, unfortunately, the Xbox Series S will not be able to output 4K or 120 frames per second in games that are capable of doing so. Nonetheless, this is still a really cool peripheral, and in fact, this thing actually reached its goal within 20 minutes of going live on Kickstarter. Yeah, seems like there's a lot of people that really want the X screen. And if you want to check this thing out yourself, the Kickstarter is live, of course, and you can go reserve it for $1, or you can get the early bird pricing as well, where you can get the X screen at a discounted price. If this is something that you're just absolutely sold on, go check out their Kickstarter page, where you can pick up the X screen. 
Now, speaking of Xbox, we have a big rumor to talk about that if this turns out to be true, it's going to be massive. Now, keep in mind, this is just a rumor for the time being, and there's no confirmation from Xbox themselves, so you always have to take this type of news with a grain of salt. But according to the journalist Jeff Grubb, which actually made a similar claim last year, went on to say during his premium Grub Snacks show on Giant Bomb that Microsoft is still looking to remove Xbox Live Gold. Yeah, so like I said before, that would be absolutely massive. But let's just go ahead and check out what exactly he had to say. And this was actually transcribed by Video Game Chronicles. But here he had to say, In the past, I've said Xbox Live Gold is going to go away. And when I started saying that it was when Xbox Live Gold was still required for free-to-play games. And I knew for a fact that they were going to make a change before Halo Infinite. And I thought at least it would be dropped for free-to-play games because they weren't going to charge people to play Halo on Xbox when they weren't charging you to play it on PC or whatever. Then they decided to raise the price and it looked weird, right? Why would they do that if they were going to get rid of Xbox Live Gold? I just wanted to reiterate, Xbox Live Gold is still on a board somewhere saying this is going to go away at some point. Whether or not they're actively talking about it right now, I don't know. But they still have it on a roadmap saying Xbox Live Gold will be dropped at some point in the future. He then later on kind of pointed to Xbox Game Pass reaching a certain milestone before Xbox Live Gold was removed. But there you have it. If this is true, I mean, this would be a major change for Xbox and definitely for the best. I mean, Xbox Live Gold for a while now has been in a bit of a weird situation. On one side, you have Xbox Game Pass, which is just a much more superior subscription service. I mean, Xbox Live Gold, for the most part, you basically get two benefits out of it. You get online multiplayer for paid games, and then you get Xbox Games with Gold, where you get their free games every month, though they haven't really done a good job with Xbox Games with Gold for quite some time, and that's probably because they're putting a lot more effort into Xbox Game Pass. So really, the main benefit of Xbox Live Gold is its online multiplayer, and the big problem with that is that now that Xbox supports PC as well, you can actually play a lot of these games on PC. You can play their multiplayer completely free. I mean, let's just go and take Gears 5 as an example. If you want to play Gears 5's multiplayer on PC, well, you can play that completely free. But meanwhile, if you have the console version, you're going to have to have Xbox Live Gold. And you know what? There's just something off about that. It just doesn't sit right with fans, especially the ones that's been supporting Xbox for well over a decade. And, you know, it, there's just something not right about this situation. So that's where something needs to happen with Xbox Live Gold. Xbox has done such a good job in recent years trying to become this consumer friendly company. They've done amazing work with backwards compatibility. Xbox Game Pass is the best deal in games. They have plenty of options to play their games, whether you want to play it on PC, you want to the Xbox Series S, then you have the Xbox Series X, you have cloud gaming, and you just have all of these different options to play their games. But Xbox Live Gold is that one archaic service that just seems to go against everything that Xbox believes in. So, I mean, if you just look at it, yeah, I think that Xbox Live Gold definitely needs to change. And if Jeff Grubb is correct here, and hopefully he is, this would be really big for Xbox and their fans. Again, you just kind of have to take this story with a grain of salt because this is something that he's claimed in the past and it didn't come to fruition this year, but maybe they just pushed it back. But at the same time, Jeff Grubb has gotten plenty of things correct in the past, so we do need to keep that in mind. So let's just kind of cross our fingers and see what happens here. Now, I will say this, and I, I kind of said this last year as well, but there is one thing that kind of makes me a little cautious when it comes to this rumor, and it's that, let's say Xbox does remove Xbox Live Gold. Well, if they do that, they're suddenly just saying goodbye to a lot of money from a, an established subscription service. With that in mind, I'm not sure if Microsoft would just flat out remove Xbox Live Gold because that would be saying goodbye to a lot of money. Uh, but I guess we'll see what happens. Maybe they make some major changes to Xbox Live Gold, which it, it seriously needs some changes. But, you know, I, I guess we'll see. 
let me know what you think about all this in the comments below though do you think that microsoft will actually remove xbox live gold or not let me know moving on we got an update for that timed playstation 5 exclusive Deathloop. Now we saw Deathloop at State of Play yesterday and it really does look fantastic, though this game in particular is in a bit of a strange situation. So what's happening here is that PlayStation signed a contract with Bethesda to get Deathloop as a timed PlayStation 5 exclusive. And well, PlayStation has been doing that a lot this generation, whether it be with Final Fantasy or in this case with Deathloop. But the thing about this one that makes it really strange is that Xbox actually acquired Bethesda after that timed exclusive contract was made, which means technically Deathloop is actually an Xbox Game Studios game that will be a timed exclusive with PlayStation. So, I mean, you know for a fact that this game is going to come to Xbox at some point as soon as that timed exclusive deal ends. Though the big question is when will that be possible? And while we actually have new information about that now, because with the latest Deathloop trailer, if you read the fine print, it says also available on PC, not available on other consoles until at least September 14th of 2022. So there you have it. And I think it's pretty easy to figure out what consoles Deathloop can come to after this timed exclusive deal ends. Obviously, Xbox is going to want Deathloop to release on Xbox as soon as possible. This is a very good looking game and they didn't acquire Bethesda for no reason. So if you are on Xbox, you can look forward to playing Deathloop sometime next holiday. Now, I will say with this whole situation with Arcane and Deathloop, I, I think it's a bit unfortunate. And the reason I say that is because with everybody knowing that this will be a timed exclusive, and we know this game's coming to Xbox Game Pass day one. This is a first party Xbox game and they do release all of their first party games into Xbox Game Pass day one. So I think a lot of people are just going to kind of wait for this game to release into Xbox Game Pass next year. And really that's whether you play on Xbox or PC. So unfortunately, I do think that Deathloop is not going to maximize its potential this holiday as I do think that there's going to be some people that kind of waits on it. It kind of reminds me of the rise of the Tomb Raider situation where a lot of people just waited for that game to come to PlayStation a year later. And I think we're going to kind of see something similar here with Deathloop. I mean, this isn't the same situation with Final Fantasy VII Remake because even though we know that's a timed exclusive, we don't know if it's coming to Xbox Game Pass for one. And number two, we don't know what platforms it will come to in the future because it it could just simply come to PC. I think it will come to Xbox, but my, my point is, is it's a very different situation, but we know what's going to happen with Deathloop. Regardless, Deathloop does look like a really good game, and I hope a lot of people do enjoy it this holiday. If, if you do have a PlayStation 5, this very well possibly could be one of the best games to release this year, so don't hesitate if you do want this game. Next up, we have a small and welcome update to talk about for Resident Evil Village. Now, personally, I believe that Resident Evil Village is one of the best games that's released this year, and it's actually one of the best games that's released for next generation platforms so far. It's a really good game. If you haven't checked it out yet, I do highly recommend it. But Resident Evil Village did reach a new milestone, being 4.5 million units sold worldwide. That is very impressive, and what that means is that Resident Evil Village is outselling Resident Evil 2 in the same time frame. Resident Evil 2 in a two month period actually sold 4.2 million, which means Village is selling it by about 300,000 units worldwide. So that kind of shows you the growth that Resident Evil is making over time. And it also shows you how excited people are for Resident Evil Village. Again, it's just a really good game. So to see this game to be so successful this early on is a great sign, especially after last year, Resident Evil 3 Remake didn't really do nearly as well. I mean, I still liked Resident Evil 3, but clearly Resident Evil Village and then Resident Evil 2 Remake has sold much better. But yeah, big congrats to Capcom on their continued success. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of say what I said yesterday. Capcom continues to be on absolute fire. They have done just such a good job in recent years. And in fact, 
I mean, they just released Monster Hunter Stories 2 today, so you can actually check that one out as well. But congrats to Capcom, and even more so, congrats to the fans for just getting another really good game. And onto the poll of the day. Yesterday, of course, PlayStation State of Play took place, and we talked all about that in yesterday's video. But I wanted to ask you all, what letter grade would you give PlayStation State of Play on July 8th of 2021? And it seems like you all were a little split on this one. 33% of you gave it a C, 26% of you gave it a D, and 33% of you gave it an F. Yeah, so it seems like a lot of you all did not like this event, but I mean, personally, I I'm just going to go and say I don't believe that this event deserves an F. I'm not going to sit here and say it was amazing or anything, but I thought it was kind of a middle of the road type of an event. Now, they did kind of try to set expectations before the event, and they said that God of War Ragnarok and Horizon Forbidden West was not going to be there. So we kind of knew this was going to be a smaller type of event, and I, I kind of left this event thinking, yeah, there's a few games here that I'm interested in. Deathloop looked really good from a gameplay standpoint. You had Death Stranding Director's Cut, which I'm absolutely going to get, and in Lost Judgment, as well as Moss Book 2, uh, I mean, you know, there was just some games here that I thought were worth paying attention to. Now, some of these other independent games, which I, I do tend to like indie type of games quite a bit, but there wasn't really any indie game here per se that really grabbed me. But, you know, even then, I still thought there were some games from this event, so I'd probably give it a C myself. I think an F is a little too harsh, personally. But, you know, I respect your all's opinions, and if that's what you believe, then that's what you believe. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.